Hi, everybody. My name's Howard. You may not recognize me because I just got a haircut. You can see it doesn't even have the usual. I can't even find the part in the part hair part cam. Doesn't even work. I, I can't even use the hair cam. There it is. Well, we, we could at least fix the part. This is Lounge Academy, and this is one half hour of mindless practicing. If you want to find out more about the intention of this, you could view uh, one of the earlier, or the first in the series. There's a series, you see them on there. They all have a lesson number. We're only, we only did like five or six. See, it's a rainy day here in uh, Buffalo Town. It's a rainy day in Buffalo Town. You can see the water all over our ticket booth. Here's some more camera angles for you. Look at you. And begin to sing. I'm doing singing this song because I miss I'm sentimental about spring. We have nicer weather than now that it's summer. Or is it summer? When is summer start? And 
begin to sing I'm not as crazy as I seem to be After all, it's spring And if I of straw and string I'm only doing what those robins do After all it's spring If I dream out loud when we're in a crowd And forget the, forget the time of day, darling. Bear with me when they stare at me. Good thing I'm practicing this one. And remark, there goes an April Fool in May. There's no such thing. I'm only dreaming of a day to be when they really ring. After all, after all. It's spring. I dream out loud when we're in a crowd and forget the time of day darling bear with me when they stare at me and remark their goals an April Fool in May and by her bells I'm only dreaming of a day to be when they really ring, ring, ring. After all, after all, after all, it's supposed to be spring. I might do less mindless practicing and more song practicing because I'm having trouble remembering them. Gotta run through them at least once during the week to remember them on the weekend securely if there is such a thing.
Here's one that James Parker requested yesterday. Which was in a different key. I wonder if the, I wonder if it's always in E flat. It's a little low for me. Shouldn't be though. Just the nearness of you It's not the your sweet conversation That brings such sensation Oh no sing in December long before the springtime is due and even though it's snowing violets are growing I know why and so do you Why do breezes sigh every evening, whispering your name as they do? And why by the feeling stars are on my ceiling? I know why, and so do you.
I think that one was from Serenade. Sun Valley, was that Sun Valley Ser Serenade? Was that the one? Then what's the other one called? Do I have trouble remembering? This should be fun with my voice right now, or lack thereof. This is from Shaft. It's from one of the Shaft movies. It really is a love ballad. What's the next most difficult song for me to remember lately? Your eyes, your eyes don't shine. Like they used to 
shine And that thrill is gone When your lips When they touch mine I'm afraid The masquerade Is over And so is love And so is love Your words Your words don't mean What they used to mean they were once inspired. You know what I'm thinking now? Since, uh, anyway, um, since my, my voice is all like, it, not, it's all congested up or something. I didn't do my vocal training yet tonight, which has nothing to do with singing songs. It's exercises and things. So don't ever think singing your songs in your repertoire is, is vocal training. It's not. But anyway, you know what I've been thinking of lately um, when I do, when I vocalize anything? I don't know. Maybe I even do it when I play. But I, I'm more aware of it when I'm singing because the singing is, is it right now is more... Uh, more challenging for me, so I'm more aware of it, because I'm newer at it. Anyway, yeah, dude, this might sound kind of, I don't know, maybe you've heard it, or, or it was too obvious to think about, or maybe not, because I don't think it's obvious or dumb at all, and, and it, it ties in with exactly with what we're doing with the... Uh, with our mindless exercise, our mindless piano playing, which I'm not actually doing. I'm cheating and I'm working on my running through the songs because I need, I want to know them on Friday night, which is coming up in a couple nights. But anyway, see now that was mindless. When no matter how crappy I'm singing, which is all the time to me, um, but it varies, you know, day to day. You know, if you sing, it's different all the time. You know what I've been doing lately is I've been doing what we do here with the piano, where you pretend you're, in your mind, you pretend you're doing it right. You know, if you've been doing something enough, if, if, you're, if you're enough of a beginner at it, if you've progressed enough, had enough experience, then you've, you've experienced a lot of sensations with your, with your voice and the visceral feelings that go along with it, as well as your, your piano, right? You know, if you have a good day, you know how, it, how you're, you're thinking more of sweeping motions rather than individual notes, perhaps. And, uh, and you're more confident it's going to work when you do that. But uh, if, you, if you, pretend, you pretend you're doing the final result, this, this works particularly if you've got some kind of basis for knowing what the final result feels like or sounds like. Okay, so, so this works after you've been at it for a while. And uh, it, it comes down to my, that formula that, that I like to do. And uh, I don't know if anybody's ever agreed with me that this even exists, but it, it does. It, uh, it, it does. If you just give it a chance and try it, you'll be able to understand what I'm talking about. And that's pretending you're doing something, right, as opposed to imagining it. And taking it one step further and pretending you're doing it 
while you're doing it. Independently of doing it, in your mind, pretend you're doing it. See, that, that's the part that so far um, the people I've casually uh, mentioned this to kind of go crazy at that point. But maybe it's just them, you know, it's not, maybe different people interpret it a different way. But, um, I mean, if you, could, if you could pretend you're, okay, say, say you're not at the piano and you're imagining you're playing the piano. So you could close your eyes and you could, you could replay the experience of playing the piano. And you might even use your imagination a little more. And maybe you're imagining you're playing something you never played before. Right? That's all imagining. Now, pretending is different. Pretending is what little kids do. And then we're taught not to do it as adults. And it's, it's I think, I suspect, my hypothesis is that this is the reason children are credited with, credited with having the fastest learning pace, which I don't know if that's even true, but um, they do learn fast. So, and I think they're learning fast because they're, they're free to pretend, right? They're not just imagining there's something. They actually become, like if a little kid's a cowboy, do kids still play cowboys? I don't think so. But if they did, you ask him if he's a cowboy and he says yes and he means it, right? So that, that's pretending. That's where you really put yourself there. And because um, I, I think that's the secret to learning is pretending personally. Now, so let's say now, let, let's all agree that you could be away from the piano sitting on our park bench out here in front of the studio. It's right under the window. I don't think you could see much of it. But let's say you're sitting there watching the world go by and you're imagining you're playing the piano and then you decide, no, I'm going to change gears now. I'm going to pretend I'm playing the piano. Well, that's quite a bit different, isn't it? If you're pretending, I, I think you'd have to be moving. There might be no piano there, but, you know, yeah, I guess you'd be playing air piano, like guys play air guitar, they're pretending. Look how good they get. Guitar players are great. So, um, now, I think we could all agree that we could, we could all do that. We, we might be too inhibited to do it, but we, but we could do it. If we wanted to do it, we could do it, right? Okay, now we're going to take that to the next level. Play the piano. And then, I mean, if you, could, if you could be sitting on a bench or riding a bike or doing something and pretending you're playing the piano, in other words, you're doing something other than playing the piano, but it's an activity, and you could also pretend you're playing the piano. I think, I think most of you would agree you, you, could, you could do that if you wanted to. Now take it to the next step. Just bring it over to the piano and play the piano. And then open up that same channel and pretend you're playing the piano. Pretend you're playing the same thing you're really playing. So now there's going to be this parallel, parallel, what would you call it? It's not a parallel, I guess it is a parallel reality. It's the reality within your mind because when a kid is pretending he's a cowboy, he really is a cowboy to him. He'll say so and he'll believe it. So when you're playing the piano, say you're playing a song, Pretend you're, pretend you're doing it while you're doing it. And don't pay any attention to the you that's really playing it. You know, don't be concerned about sloppiness or missing a note or anything. But, but play it. 
But in your mind, when you're pretending to play it, pretend you're playing it as if it's the best performance you know how to give of that at this stage, right? You know, of the using the, the wisdom you've got to this point, you know, of how the phrasing should be, you know, sculpted and the dynamics should be interpreted and how the emotions of it are and um, how beautiful the soft parts are and, and how you're bringing out the voices you want to bring out or whatever it is that you, you hear in your mind coming up as how you would play it if you could just pretend you were doing it and as, as exceptional as you can, you know, as best you can. And, and do, that, do that when you're singing. That's what I've been thinking of as an exercise, as a practice exercise, very recently, just the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, I haven't been, I've been busy with the, the business I started this month, past month. So it, it took, and it's great, but it, it took me away from practicing as much as I'd like to and even missing some days. So, you know, it's, you're playing catch up all the time. You don't, you never feel really, you know, at the leading edge of your progress. And I found it was very enlightening to try this. I, I do it when, I, when I'm doing the vocal exercises, when I'm singing a material in a song. I don't do it all the time because I don't think of it all the time. You know, you're, you're juggling a lot of balls when you're playing and singing and, or, or doing either one. But... Um, I keep coming back to that, and when I think of that, it helps in so many ways. And one of the most interesting ways it helps is that I realize that I was I was part of some of the aspects of the of the singing um, were were poor because, because normally I would be trying to sing it. Well, I, would, yeah, I know, I know what, I, what it occurred to me was I was thinking go, to go through the, the, the mechanical infrastructure of your you know, anatomy to produce the sound you want to produce, right? If you've studied voice, you're always conscious of that kind of thing as you're developing it, the placement, the support, all these things that make the sound come out a lot di differently, you know, using the technique. So, so you're aware of the technique. And I notice um, sometimes when I've been, been struggling, if I then pretend I'm doing it and just pretend it's feeling, that's why I said this is good if you're a little bit advanced so that you've got these the, the, the muscle memory, the, the, the visceral memory, the, feel, the memory of these feelings of when it, when it works and what correlates to what, that what feeling is going to give a certain, you know, I'm talking about like muscles and breath support and that kind of thing. I'm not talking about emotional feeling, although that, that too. But so I think of the technique. I pretend that the technique is working beautifully, you know, that I'm covering it when I should, that I'm, I'm putting myself in the right positions when I should, that I'm breathing just the right way and that it feels really good. And I'm hearing the sound that that technique would, would produce when executed properly. And I'm pretending that I'm hearing that. And I found that um, it made a marked improvement immediately because I, I dropped a lot of things that were causing it to sound bad, you know, because I was hung up on trying to get, trying to get my voice into a certain position to create that sound, to use, you know, the vocal technique uh, to do that. And uh, by just pretending it's happening and not ignoring the technique, but pretending you're doing the technique 
and that it's easy and it feels right. So you're not fighting it because you're not listening to what's coming out. You're listening to what's the other reality in your head of you pretending it is. And I notice what really starts coming out is much closer to where I wanted to be um, immediately. Okay, I mean, I mean, what kind of tip is that, right? Try it. R roll with it. It works. And let's try it on the piano. You know, like say, say you wanted to do a, some kind of thing, and you know, you're, you you know, you're you're kind of tempering it, pulling it back, because you know it's going to be sloppy or you're afraid it's going to be, just pre think of how it feels to do it right or, or, or how it would feel if you ever could, when you do get to that point, you know, to just take what you know and what you've experienced and project that on how you expect it's going to be. Because you get the idea of how motions feel when you're waving your hands, you know, rather than individual keys, it's, you know, positions and motions and waves. And you know how that feels. Just expand it to when you're doing things you can't do yet. And imagine that it's, it's flowing and, you, and how it, you want it to sound. And of course, what you play is going to be a big train wreck, right? It, you, it's going to be all screwed up. That's good. Because um, you keep doing this and the pretending takes us, takes us to that reality point. If you keep, just like a little kid, you keep pretending over and over again, it's your, your brain and your body, they know what to do. You don't have to, you don't have to do it for them, it, you, for you. It'll, um, it'll do it autonomically. You know, just, just like, uh, physical conditioning in a gym or for a sport or something. You do something and eventually it, it yields a, a specific result. And uh, that's, what, that's what the P factory does. Vitamin P or the P factor we'll call it for pretending. I think it's the most powerful tool, the most powerful muscle we have. I think it'll work. I haven't found anything it doesn't work for yet. You know, I'm not talking about just music either. Did I talk away my half hour? Thirty-eight minutes, yeah. Well, I gave my jaws a lot of exercise. I hope you, you uh, try to digest what I said. I know it sounds real simple, because it is, but um, we're programmed to not want to do that if we're over five years old, you know, or 10 years old or whatever, I think. Don't you think so? You know? But why let, why let the kids have that powerful, why let them have that power? We're smarter than they are, right? I think we can learn faster than them too. Well, I'm going to say goodbye and get on with the rest of my practicing here so that I stop talking, and uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. I'm Howard, and this has been Lounge Academy. <laughs>